And welcome to Bench Monster TV. I'm Ashley Lynn Condre. And I am the Bench Monster. And how is everybody this evening? Hope everybody's doing good. Thank you for joining us. As always, we appreciate it. Wanted to start off by saying congr congratulations to Thor for the 1104 deadlift. Unbelievable, man. Huge lift. Yeah, Five, very impressive. 501 kilos. Is that what it was? 501 kilos. Jesus. Yeah, very impressive, man. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, very I watched it the other day, and I was, I was blown away. He made it look easy too. Strong, yeah. Like he should have took a fourth strong. attempt, but yeah, so so be it. Um, so we're gonna start out re with with where we left off last week. I didn't play your videos, and I think I can get your videos to play today. So your your Arnold Classic, you don't have your bench press at all, no. right? No bench. No. But we do have squat and deadlift. Squat and deadlift. Okay, so. I had a bench. I'm going to throw out the, which one do you want to see first? I hope, and I hope they play. Squat. They played earlier, so your squat. Uh, let's try the squat. And how much is this squat? Was, that was, was kind can, of can you fill us in on how much weight this is? Well, for some reason, I couldn't get what my actual, th my, my PR, my third attempt was 340, but I don't think, I think this is my second. Second attempt? Attempt, which would have been like 330 or something Okay, well, like let's, that. let's just give it a shot here. Uh, and there's audio in it too, of course, but I've muted that down. So this is how much? Okay, so I think this is my second attempt. Second attempt was 3.30, and then I just bumped up to 3.40, and then people went to 3.5. So, am I calling depth? Am I going back, back, yeah, back? Yeah, I heard okay. you. Okay, there you go. I think I know what I'm doing. Nothing wrong with that, per se, right? Were you happy with that? Yeah, that was what I was going for. Okay. The 3.40 could have been a little prettier. Like I said, I don't think that was 3.5. I think that was 3.30. Because yeah. the 340 was a little little bit more of a grind. Like it was 3.40, okay. Um, grindy. Move on to my favorite lift, and that's deadlift. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everybody on the same And lift. how much are we going to watch on this deadlift? Uh, 400. 400 pound deadlift. Okay, yeah. it's from the rear. I think I'm filming this. I'm sorry. Um, it's the best I could do. Um, not too bad. Can I get filmed? No hitch yeah, either. I, should, I totally should have had the next lift. Like... Because my PR is 424, and that was my 400. That I kept missing 415, which you I've got, done millions of times. You got good speed off the floor. Um, but I, all, like my main goal was no. just to be able to pull 400 at the Arnold because at one point I like couldn't even do 225 without like massive amounts of pain and it felt super sketchy. So like I was just gonna be happy with happy 400 with that. or above, but okay. I wanted to do more than that because I have done more than that. But that's all right. All right, and then what happened in the bench press? We don't have videos of that, but. <laughs> I just, I was having a hard time in the bench press ever since my shoulder surgery, um, but I had like... Yeah, speak up. Am I not being heard? Like, well, your levels just aren't where I'd like to have them. Yeah, ever since shoulder surgery, I just, my shoulders have never been back to normal. Back to my normal. bench press has never, it was never my strong suit, but it was more like, it was it was better than it is now, but ever since shoulder surgery, it's just a pain to bench. And right. I just struggle and struggle and start to kind of get some momentum and then like it'll start to ache again and i'll have to take some time off so it's just like just i understand so yeah, it, surgery's a bad i word. just did that to stay in the in the meat so that i could deadlift so i wasn't worth right okay writing home about it's not worth taking well like time. and like i said i hope that you uh qualified for next year because i definitely want to go back to the arnold next year and mm -hmm. I think that'd be a fun trip it again. It's so fun, and one of the best parts that we didn't really—you were supposed to show pictures of—but one of our the funnest parts of the trip was getting to spend a lot of time at West Side. Um, we actually got to have breakfast with Louis Simmons and, and yeah. visit with him briefly. He he bought our breakfast, so that was pretty cool. Um, that was very very cool, and we got to hang out with a lot of the guys at West Side, and um, got to I got to train all three power lifts there, and Ryan got to help a lot of guys bench press and. Um, work their shirts and right so it was just that was a blast we didn't mention that much much last time well and i actually i thought i knew how to box we, we squat to i thought i knew how to box squat here and i really didn't know what i was doing i wanted louis to show me but he was busy and uh wes mccormick filled yes. that void and yes. showed yeah, me how awesome to box squat and i brought that back with me and i I'm, I'm getting really addicted to box squatting don't tell anybody but <laughs> i'm really enjoying doing it so um i want to talk briefly about a book i read you know i do read books uh, one of my heroes and uh, one of the people that inspired me to bench press, of course, that many people don't know about, is this man right here, uh, David Tank Abbott. And uh, this is his book he wrote called The Bar Brawler. A yeah, very interesting read, very interesting uh, um, uh, non-fictional, I don't know what it, how, how, how you word that. It's, it's about his life, but it's not... Um, it's written it's so true, that right? you can't... Well, it's what he says, but you know you can't 
if he wrote the truth in there, I think they could probably arrest him for uh, oh. everything he did in there. It's pretty, it's pretty deep. But uh, the man, you know, back in 1995, he uh, put up a 620 bench, uh, UFC 10, they showed it. And uh, I was like, man, I want to bench 600 raw. And it was because of that man that inspired me to do. And I remember exactly when I did the, I did 585 raw first. And I thought, man, I'm just like Tank Abbott. But uh, I, uh, I was trying to drink every weekend and, and live his lifestyle and drinking and trying to bench 600 just didn't formulate for me. So I had to give up the drinking. So, and uh, look at me now. So, but uh, that was an interesting read. I can't wait for his other books to come out. I'm excited about it. So other, other topics in the news, um, uh, people on Facebook and in, in, the, in the community are talking about this uh, hornet, this gigantic uh. hornet. And I have a picture of it here. As you if know. things aren't bad enough. Oh. Yeah, it's gigantic. It's a big, in, in, you know, insect creature. And I, I don't know how he got the how this thing got the fear mongering name. I'm really disappointed. You know, well, murder hornet. I mean, why do we have to label things? I mean, you know, because it'll kill you. It, it, like it, it goes to kill. It's aggressive. There's it's a reason. A have you seen any videos of it attacking things? Well, I mean, because it. Hey, often it, lions it's trying to things. murder you. Yeah. It's not not trying. Everything to be, kills. It's, not, it's trying to kill. Right. Um, I just, just don't like the name. Really I don't. I don't like the name that it's been uh, branded with. And uh, as we look at this, you know, it's another thing that's been branded. That is a sporting rifle. So this is like re-education 101. This is a this is a hornet. Not a. No, it's a different kind of. I'm not impressed with the name. I'm sorry. And then of course, uh, you know, not an assault rifle. A sporting rifle. Okay, and a bench shirt, <laughs> not a band shirt, a bench shirt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had to move around. It was in the way. Bench shirt. Okay, so now that we've corrected that on our re-education of the day, I uh, just wanted to cover those topics. This uh, this poor hornet. I just don't know. You know, he's getting a bad rap. Have you seen the video? I've seen. I've heard attacks, bees, and this, that, and the other. But give the guy a break. You know, I mean, he, you know, it's first time in this country. No. And he came no, over from Japan. No, it's horrific, and he's coming at a bad time. We're having well, we're having a bad well, time the, here. We don't need it. It's the next threat against the American people. Of course, is going to be this guy right here. He's coming after you, and um, yeah. So watch out. I don't know. Yeah, I'm it's horrified. Uh, I, yeah. I'm watching it. I'm terrified. But uh, what do you do? You know? So I, I just want to throw that out there and <laughs> make light of it a little bit. I haven't seen one yet, but I'm, I'm on the lookout. I don't know if they're in the Pacific Northwest or they or down south. I don't know. I don't know. I, I was told they came I really over. I haven't read much about it because it horrifies yeah, me. Yeah, they came over on some type of boat from Japan is what Kyle told us. And I'll, I'll believe what he says. <laughs> I don't know where he gets his, his information <laughs> he's, from. He's accurate. I, but I'm impressed. You know, it's a gigantic, you know, and that, I don't want to label either. You know, I, just wanna, I don't want to call it. It's no. like. If I call it a gigantic hornet, it's like calling somebody, you know, like a fat man or a big man. You know, I don't really want to label anything myself. I just call it a hornet. Okay, nobody likes that. Okay. No. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Cut me a break. I just know who God's green earth invented murder oh, hornet. Dear. It's just quickly how people, people get You're labels. focusing on the wrong thing here. I'm, I'm excited about it because I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, and... it's a jacked up hornet. You know, I'm just... It's kind of cool. I, I definitely want to see one. Uh, got a lot of questions coming in. Did you uh, want to start the questions? Or yeah, you? if you can read them. I mean, I can I can ramble them off, obviously. So. Um, any insight? So John Smith wants yep. to know any insight on the Kruger bench shirt and where to get one. Uh, Rob for for real Pharrell is where you get them. Um, I have his business card upstairs. Uh, I can post that information later. Uh, he would be the guy you want to get a hold of. Um, I don't know if you Google you know Kruger bench shirt or. Maybe find find the guy on uh, Facebook, F O R E L L, Rob. I, I believe. Sure. Don't quote me on that, but uh, he's the guy you want to get a hold of. Yeah, and any insight on it? Um, I've worn it twice. In the last time uh, I wore it, I took eight fifty five to a three board, because that's all the amount of weight that we can get on the bar at this garage gym. But uh, I have been informed that there are hundred pound plates on the ground in another area of this garage gym. So I think we can get nine uh 55 and then if we throw some chain on it a little over a grand i think that's the plan tuesday is to rock that so i'm definitely uh, i still don't i still don't have um since i threw this picture up i still don't have this shirt um i was told in a text message last tuesday that was coming 
I have not received it yet. So uh, keep an out, eye out for that. I definitely like to have that. You know, I'm excited to get new toys and play with them. So any more questions? Yeah. Um, Marty Shakes would like to be a gym person. That's not a question. Um, best tricep exercise. Well, like I said, I got 49 or 50 of them. Um, we were going to post them. I was going to post a video today at our gym, and uh, I didn't get to do that. I was going to do some rolling dumbbells on the floor. Those are kind of one of my favorites. We'll have to do that. We'll try to do that next it, time. I'll do a lot of different angles with the rolling dumbbells, so I'll, I'll have a video of those. But um, close grip bench is uh, one of my staples back in the day. To uh, build, try it builds everything. But uh, you know, close like Louis says, a close grip bench will build a wide grip bench. And so I always, uh, you know, did a lot of close grip um, floor range. Uh, board pressing later on I did close grip with bands and everything else but uh, uh, assistance wise I, I don't think you can beat the uh, J impress for one was another one too um, we don't do those as often really heavy on dumbbells though kickbacks extensions and all types of uh, rolling dumbbells are my are what uh, is my bread and butter so tricep exercise what bars are you using for your training yep what bars are you using for your training? Do you do conjugate? Your opinion on conjugate for raw lifting? And did you change anything for you or did you change anything for you or did you do the exact same thing Louis said in his books? Um, I've haven't read a lot of Louis's books. I'm starting at the end of the question. Um, I I talked to Louis, you know, for a cup for 6 hours, 2 days in a row in 2000. And um, I just did everything he told me. I have it written on a manila envelope, actually. And um, it was uh, the conjugate method, uh, speed training, uh, doing max effort exercises. Back then, it was two weeks in a row, then switching. And then um, tricep assistance work, uh, picked that up. Speed benching was another one. But um, what bars do I use for my training? Well, we use a football bar. We use a camber bar. We use uh, fat grips on a bar. We don't have a axle bar to play with. Um, what other bars? Duffalo bar is another one. Um, uh, what else do we got? Mm, Try to switch up bars on speed day on our speed benches. Too. Definitely is uh, yeah. switching those up every every week or every two weeks is uh, is how we rotate those. So uh, conjugate for raw lifting. Well, um, I've taken many clients and um, one in particular, a guy by the name of Tim Smith, had a five uh, twenty bench press and the conjugate method for him. Uh, shot him up to six, 585 at a USPA meet, and two weeks later, 600 at a UPA meet. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it works phenomenally. I just think that uh, – I think all training works. I'm not one guy to sit on here like you go to YouTube and you have these bozos with other dry erase boards in the back, why I hate West Side, and uh, the shit like that. You know, I think all – I think Chad Wesley Smith, I think all, everybody's training works. I even did 531 back in the day. I didn't do it for very long, but – I believe I made progress on it. You make progress on anything. I think I think anybody that has a training program, you can benefit from. And then what the beauty part is uh, of it is you have your foundation that got you to here, and then you have somebody else's training, and you make progress off of that, and maybe you take chunks of that, put it into your training, and continue on. That's kind of what I did. Everything that got me to 733, you know, I dropped, took up uh, Louis' advice, and then as time went on, I started reincorporating some of those old-school methods of mine into the west side method and it came became a hybrid method and it works you know and uh constantly switching up always looking for new things and intriguing ways to get strong and new methods and rep techniques and, and rest periods and uh supplements the whole nine yards i mean you got to have the total package if you want to you want to be number one so question yeah move on um <clears throat> Read Daniel Lewis's if question. You, is that the mm -hmm. next one? Did you answer all these questions? I answered Steve, uh, Steve's questions. Steve, oh, okay. Stephen. Yeah, you yeah. got the last one. Daniel Lewis. Um, if you don't mind answering mm -hmm. this type of question, how much did you bench naturally? Uh, well, that would be uh, 551 in a, in a double ply shirt. And it's kind of an interesting story because uh, four, three months before that, I was drinking every weekend. I wrote about this in my book. Uh, you know, I was bench pressing and, uh, one, and my bench wasn't really going up that fast. I think I did a 512 in November 1997, drinking like a, like a, like a crazy man on the weekends. And then uh, New Year's Eve, I said, F it, I ain't going to drink no more. And two months later, I did a 551 weighing 257. And um, after that, it uh, wasn't natural anymore. So 
Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Don't know how far I would have gone, but that was uh, that's your answer for you. Five fifty one. So. Murder hornets Murder suck hornet ass. Sucks. Yeah. Jer Jerry's I'm glad, trying to catch glad one, that he man. got a life lesson. Huh? Jerry's glad that he got a life lesson. Jerry um, Swart, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Uh, do you think you bench more than that hornet if the hornet had a denim bench shirt and you had one arm? Yeah. Uh, well, den uh, denim shirt's a good shirt, you know. Uh, I think the hornet might win. I'm going to give the hornet credit because I'm, I'm impressed. It's, uh, it's a beefy animal and... Um, yeah, I want to see one in person. They look like they're they're pretty big and they're a little intimidating. But I used to have a tarantula back in the day, and I'd like to get one again, but she won't no, let me have not. one. That's not happening. I had a Mexican red knee. Will not be living here. And uh, I used that's to get it out and let it crawl on me in the morning. It was a beautiful little animal. So I'm not really intimidated by uh, spiders, hornets. This thing like tarantulas are friendly. That's a, it's a friendly this tarantula. This isn't though the murder hornet. Well, the murder hornet, I mean, just like a beast, they're going to sting you. I mean, just, I just don't want this guy to get a bad rap. He's only been here for a week, and he's right there with the coronavirus now. I just, I don't think it's fair. It's even a bad time, man. Yeah. Like, we can't I wanted to talk about it. I'm excited. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> don't skip anybody now. No, no, I'm glad that we're, uh, can you tell the Mark Henry story? We were, we were <laughs> supposed to continue that from yeah. last time. This, uh, this bozo right here. We'll talk about him in another episode. Um, because I don't want to rush through it, and there's a lot of lead up. There's yeah, but you said you were gonna tell it. I don't want to embellish, and there's just a whole bunch. Just tell it. <laughs> you we <laughs> promised it last time. We we ha we we okay. couldn't couldn't do any more questions. Well, there's people, that there's the people dropping questions here. So well, the Mark right. Henry story goes do what like you this. Want to do. Okay, the Mark Henry story goes. My first trip out to the Arnold, I didn't see him. Uh, Kevin Randleman was there, and he was an Ultimate Fighter. He passed away. Rest in peace. I believe the second year. Mark Henry was there, and I was, you know, you're at the Arnold, and you got Don Fry, you got, uh, who else, uh, Randy Couture, when he threw my head on the table at his booth in 2004, I mean, and then I saw Mark Henry, and uh, he walked in the back of the warm-up area, and he said, all you mother effers, get out of my way, and I'm, you know, I've been a wrestling fan since I was in third grade, back with uh, NWA, Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, the Four Horsemen, Hulk Hogan, Randy Macho Man, Steamboat, I mean, the list goes on and on, big wrestling fan, still am. And, uh, you know, I was like, wow, that was Mark Henry, you know, and, and I thought, well, maybe he was just in a bad mood. Next year, uh, you had to have a, uh, a badge to get in the warm-up room at the Arnold. And there was a female security guard uh, standing by the curtain, and the curtain whips open, and it's Mark Henry. And, he sa and she says, you need a badge. And he said, just try to stop me, mother effer. And I was just like, okay, you know, it's like... Dick. He's a dick, dude. And then third year, 2007, uh, like I said, I was warming up, and the strong men needed another hour. I was already into, like, 315, so I was, like, kind of pissed. Um, and I walked over, and there was a new kid. I can't remember his name. I think his name was Scott. His first time to the Arnold, new guy. And, you know, all the strong men were doing their little yoke. Is that what they call it when they walk back and forth? It's crowded back there, man. You got, you got three 400-pound dudes back there. And uh, he, he, you know, ran across the, the warm-up path there, and, you know, he looked both ways, and he ran by Mark Henry, and Mark Henry cussed at him. And I heard the mother effer word again, and that was a trigger. Hey, third time you're out, fat man. And uh, so I ran over there, and uh, I stood right by his right ear, like two inches from it. I wasn't touching him, but I was in his space. And I was telling him, uh, in a nutshell, you mother uh, effing tired of your shit talking back here and i was just i was hotter than a firecracker to be honest with you and uh hormones were elevated that day for me but um that just it, it crossed the line and i got really pissed and uh i was ready to um not choke him because when i was yelling at him at his face i realized his neck is like five feet around i was like i'm not gonna be able to choke this guy but i had a i had a fist clenched from the hip man and all he had to do was turn this way and uh but to be honest with you guys, um, I think what was going on behind me, I had the West Side guys backing me up. Rob Leondo was back here. Uh, Bob Coe, he was there. And uh, Paul Roch. But I didn't realize that um, there, was a, there was a riot about to occur. It wasn't going to be a one-on-one -on -one thing because uh, I found out later that uh, Savickas, you know, he was a big man. I think he was 400 pounds. He was coming up behind me. And I believe my handler, Paul Roch, was supposed to handle him. And, you know, I don't know where that could have gone, but there would have been a riot and there would have been a, 
that probably would have been the last time benching was allowed there, and I probably would be just getting out of jail right now because I don't have a legal team like the WWE does for Mark Henry. So I um, I defused the situation and and didn't think nothing of it, and then I go home, and uh, Mr. Smarty Pants here, well, Dave Palumbo kind of fueled it a little bit. You know, he, he there's a YouTube video of him, and he's talking shit about me because I'm not there the next year because the WPO... Kerry Kidder, we weren't there in 2008. So I was not there. But he ran his mouth again. Um, to a long story short about Mark Henry, which was kind of the cool part, was uh, Dave Palumbo, you know, has his uh, RX Muscle radio show. And uh, he had Mark Henry on there. Mark Henry said it never happened, blah, blah, blah. I got on there with my, my guys and they, you know, whatever. Well, Triple H got involved. And Triple H... Uh, but Triple H and, and um, Palumbo are close buddies, and the WWE at the time was coming here to Tri-Cities, Washington. And uh, boom, bada bing, because of that incident, uh, Triple H made it all good because he got us four front row seats to the so WWE close, event. Yeah. And it, it was when the big, so big guys were in. Yeah. We, we had Undertaker, we had Undertaker um, Big Show, Edge, uh, the Bella, Bella the Twins. Twins. I mean, they were all here. So it was, it was all in all, it was good. But, Triple H was there. Yeah, Triple H, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, I mean, he it, it, worked, hand at the end. Yeah. it worked out pretty good. Um, can't say that I wasn't looking for this man this year at the Arnold. Um, I, my priority was, obviously, to go and handle her at the meet, meet and greet everybody, see if anybody still knew who I was. I've been out there since 2007, ladies and gentlemen. So, I was out there, and um, uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was good. Um, I, I, I was looking. I was looking for him. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, but uh, you know, West Side's more important, and uh, I had other other things to deal with. But uh, if him and I ever cross paths again, um, I don't know what will happen. He's supposed to be a good guy now. Maybe he's mature. Somebody said he's cool. yeah, he's cooled his jets a little bit. Uh, that who was that? Can happen in old age. I think. I think. Uh, well, you know, and I, get, I get a lot of questions about that. And Jamie Harris uh, wrestled with him, and uh, he said he's a dick. Um, that was a long time ago, though. People change, you know. I don't know, but. It was a one-time thing, you know. Um, I laughed it off later, but uh, uh, it could have been worse, and who knows. I just don't like people that run their mouth because they're big, and then when you confront them, they, they cowered away. And that's, I mean, when I'm standing next to somebody and I'm yelling and I'm ready to go and I'm in their space, I mean, I don't know what more do the guy needs. I mean, there should have been, a, there should have been some, some blows thrown there, but there wasn't, and... Um, but I just uh, still a big fan of wrestling, and uh, as much as I disliked Mark Henry, I, I still respect him because he's in the WWE and he's making big money, and you know I think that's really cool. I think that was a path I could have took back in the day. Um, in 2002, you know, a guy by the name of Glenn Chabot was uh, trying out for the WWF, and uh, the story goes that uh, he jumped off the top of the rope or something, and injured himself and then my name came up and i believe hulk hogan's son has a friend who knows me when they were living in florida and my name was being tossed around and um at the time i'm not, not saying i had a contract offered to me but uh i heard the numbers that that uh, chabot was going to get and i believe it was at the time it was two hundred and thirty thousand for uh, dark matches a one-year contract but ladies and gentlemen uh you don't just hop into pro wrestling and pick it up i mean it's something that it's fun to sit on your couch and think that you can get out there and do it, kind of like UFC and all that. But choreographed as it may be, I mean, you got to sell, you know, things in the W yeah, the, in wrestling. You, you can't just go out there and, you know, oh, that, that I was sold, not fake. That, I sold that. See, I, I, that's how. You did not sell that. Well, yeah, you did. It hurt. You did it. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how that's how wrestling is. If you don't warn me, I would have. I threw a chop. Yeah. So. Okay. But uh, no, that's a, uh, being a, a pro wrestler, I I I, I mimic the. Uh, the traveling schedule and the demand that are put on on these guys to travel. I don't think Vince McMahon pushes them to, to travel 300 days a year anymore. Um, I believe they have splits. I think The Miz spoke briefly. He, he's three on, two off type of whatever. So I don't think you're on. I couldn't imagine being on the, on the road every day. Different city, different hotel, find a gym, stay in shape, go perform. Oh, Jesus, I mean. It would be a wild ride, and it would be fun, be fun, but just like anything, though, I mean, It'll supplements and painkillers and uppers and downers and lefters and riders. I mean, we've heard the the, the cool stories of, uh, you know, old school, you know, Ric Flair days and, and uh, how they lived, and uh, it's, it's interesting. It's a wild lifestyle, 
but um, you know, it, uh, you pick your poison. And but I, I thought I thought bench at the time, you know, 2002, wrestling. I didn't want to take that route. I wanted to be a. Uh, uh, I had the 800 bench at that time, and I was like, no, I'm going to keep this going and, and market a uh, book and whatnot. So I went with that route. So next That's question. I hope the Mark Henry choice. story covered. I didn't ad lib. I didn't add anything. I just tell you a little what happened and and uh, say lobby. So. We're ways back up. We're yeah. going to have to, like, cut off questions probably about okay. here. Well, start with uh, okay. um, Cocaine Jesus. Blaze. What a co cocaine of blood. Co oh. um, I don't know. Has squatting helped your leg drive throughout the years? Yes, absolutely. And squatting, like I said, I told the story previously uh, a week or two ago that um, I could bench 315 for 10. This was in 1994 or 3 and squat it for 1. And uh, some older guys in the gym said I need to squat more so I started squatting got my squat up to 500 and my bench took off so it definitely helps deadlifting does not in 1997 a guy by the name of Bull Stewart uh, he was a 242 man he lives out in Seattle I believe somewhere and he pulled 804 pounds at 242 and I walked up to him and I said man I want to deadlift 804 pounds and he looked at me and I I, I just remember him saying he's like, he's like Ryan if you want to be a great bench presser I don't know if he said don't deadlift or don't deadlift heavy. He said one of those. I can't remember, but that came from that guy. So I'm not a big fan of deadlift. So, and it's her favorite. So next question. The best list. Um, I think it was what do you both do for jobs? Uh, online training, personal training locally here. And I own a uh, uh, dry land wheat business that my grandfather left behind. And I inherited that. So it's uh, 330 acres and I have some other uh, property out there that I'm not allowed to farm or do anything with. It's called CRP land. And basically you go out there and you can, you know, shoot your guns and whatnot. And just uh, the government pays me to do nothing with it, which is kind of cool. So, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy giving back. I mean, I got 30, how many years? 29, 28 years of experience. And, and um, I like to pass it down to people. And I'm not one of those guys, you know, that uh, I charge $1,000 to talk on the phone with me. It's not about getting rich i mean i like to put a steak on the table once in a while but uh you know i i, I don't rate people and uh, i actually do more more for free than i do for money so but because it's a thrill for me to take somebody and um and, and add numbers to their bench press or their squat i know a little bit about everything even deadlift i mean it's not rocket science how to train but most people don't know how to train properly or how to eat properly or how to sleep properly and and how to put 110 percent into something so there's a lot of uh factors that go into it but i enjoy doing it every day is a saturday for me that's what i like to say yeah and then i work out i work at an elementary school as a family resource coordinator and i coach gymnastics so those keep me pretty busy right now sadly none of them neither of them are can i go to them i'm doing as much as i can for the school you gotta speak a little louder man i it's looking i'm in the green okay you're in the green's good Stop pointing. Sorry to I'm interrupt done, you. I'm done. That's my story. I, I work at an elementary school and I coach gymnastics. Go ahead. <laughs> I get excited. What can I, I say? I'm, I'm done talking. Okay. Papa Bear. Recommendations for a raw bencher approaching 50 years old, avoiding injuries while making gains. Uh, I'm sure you have a lifting background at 50 years old. I don't think you're just starting to bench press at that age, so I'm assuming you have a foundation. And so I would need to see what type of foundation that is, any pre-existing injuries, back injuries, any ailments that might hinder progress. And then we would design a program uh, around, uh, around that, and a, a, a reasonable one. I mean, if, if, you have, uh, if you're 50 years old and you can do 405 for one rep, you know, then a 12-week then a training cycle, it would be common practice for you to put on, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds on your bench. Uh, contributing all the factors, I mean, eating, sleeping, training, supplementation, technique, I mean, maxifying all those and putting 110% into it. And you might do more than that. I've seen people uh, in eight weeks put 50 pounds on their bench press. So, and that's just doing speed work. No maximum effort exercises whatsoever. And so it would be West Side uh, Congia training and with my Canelli twist on it a little bit and, uh, and find your weaknesses and exploit them. What do you got? I, well, I was just, I was trying to remember where I said, because we're going to have to cut them off. Cut yeah, off we can't do this all night. Because we don't, I don't yeah. want to like, go on forever and yeah. ever and start to bore people um 
What do you do to develop strong forearms to stabilize the bench press? Uh, I have a gripper. It's green. It has springs on it. I don't know the name of it. Uh, I was gifted it by Pride Powerlifting back in the day. I have it, and I squeeze that. I have uh, uh, old school grippers. You know, you just sit them by the couch. When you're watching TV, you do 20 reps. Uh, forearm work, like today, you know, uh, did uh, rolling, put the barbell in the hand, and then do wrist curls. Uh, and actually, you know, benching in general, heavy weights, you know, have to kind of will build your wrists and your, and your forearms. But forearms are stabilizers, so hammer curls, uh, overhand uh, uh, reverse curls, those things of that nature. But you got to train them often. It's, it's a weird muscle group here. I don't, I don't think uh, it would hurt. It's like calves. I think you can train them every, every other day, you know. High reps, low reps. I mean, if you want them to grow, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kill them. What type of shrugs do you do? Oh, uh, well, Kazmaier, when we had a trip to Alaska a year and a half ago, told me to do really wide uh, barbell shrugs. And so I do those right now where I grip the bar really wide and I shrug. Uh, I do uh, trap bar shrugs. I do dumbbell shrugs. Uh, upright rows tend to, uh, work them a little bit too. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was trying to figure out where, okay. Um, give me a second. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, what? Ryan took me from, Jerry says Ryan took me from 200 to 300 in about nine months. Thank you, Jerry. I remember that. Christian Garza, the Cavs, the Cavs press works for you. Question mark. I don't know what a Cavs press yeah. is. What's a Cavs press? I'd have to, you have to get back to me on the Cavs press. I don't know because I also read down here somebody wanted you to explain it because they couldn't find it on video. Cavs so I don't know. press? Yeah. Cavs. Like Kazmaier? Not sure. Oh, I assume that's right. Let's see uh, what we got here. Okay. We, we, we can't answer questions all night, though. I saw you do 500 for five raw as shit advantage. 500 for 500. Yeah, we okay. might have to do some research and try to continue that. The cows? Okay. Yeah, I bet you can figure that out or even maybe you can John Smith, uh, Luke Sando. Yeah, I heard about him today. Yeah. I, I passed that up on Facebook. I didn't read it until somebody messaged me about it. A young man, 30 years old. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I was looking into it uh, three hours ago. I, I was curious what the cause of death was. Um, I mean, rest in peace, sir, but that's a young man. And you didn't uh, have a lot of time on this earth. So you don't like to see that, you know. Don't, uh, it's not one of the things that, uh, that um, you like to see. But, you know, you never know when your, your card's going to be pulled. You know, God's going to take you away. It's just, it's, it's a weird thing. It can happen any day. What? Sorry. Ready? What do you got? What are the best upper back exercises to help? bench upper back i do face pulls a lot of face pulls west side does a lot of those and uh, i do them with a strap or uh or the uh the rope and i do highs i do lows um there's a ton of them if you, if you uh you know not one in particular i always uh, try to find matt winning does a lot of different upper back movements and uh, i watch for his facebook videos or uh, instagram videos and he does a lot of upper back stuff and so i i watch him and uh and i, I take his exercises and i go in the gym and do them so when you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, and stuff, I mean, skip past the political bullshit and the, the murder hornets and everything and try to find people that are doing exercises and, and, um, and, and watch how they're doing them and, and do them yourself. I mean, you can, never, you can never know it all. There's always something new out there that you can add to your repertoire. Would you rather see you and Westside versus Mark Henry and a few strongmen brawl or Eddie Hall and Thor Box? I saw the Eddie, Ho Eddie Hall and Thor thing. My understanding is they're friends, and it's like it's going to be a charity thing. I don't think, you know, um, I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be like a smoker match. Probably, you know, we used to have those in high school, and uh, sixteen ounce gloves, and they'll just throw haymakers, and it'll be fun to watch. Um, I don't know. I, I, I thought I saw Pujanowski wants to take on Eddie Hall. I I don't know. Um, your question is, I, I I think the the Thor and the Eddie Hall thing would be a a theatrical thing to watch and very entertaining. Maybe Mark Henry and I could be on the undercard. <laughs> That'd be exciting. <laughs> um, so this person wanted us to explain the Cavs press, but we already yep. said we, we're going to have to continue that on another episode. Oh, I like said. this one here. Unilateral uh, dumbbell floor press. Unilateral. Down, up, down, up. Haven't done them, but the fact that I... 
uh, see that you're talking about them, I definitely uh, would like to try them. We do, uh, we do uh, on the bench, on the flat bench with dumbbells, we'll do one side over here and then we'll do one side over here. It's kind of a balancing technique that's involved, but uh, unilateral, great word. Oh, oops. Oh, you, you're bouncing around. I did miss that one. Yeah. That was my bad. Um, what, I know we're going to have to cut off pretty yeah. soon. I know we don't want to bore people. Um, I went to Costco today and got some ribeye. I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to get some red meat today. So we're going to have a ribeye here, and I'm going to fire those up pretty soon on the barbecue. Very exciting. Yeah, I'm hungry. What age do you think a power lifter will stop getting better? Um, age is a uh, good question. Um, I think it boils down to... How well of a foundation you built for yourself, how well you, you've stayed injury free, you train smart, you live smart, and, um, you know, you've uh, took care of your body. Um, and you weren't a, uh, you didn't uh, run the jets too hot when you're a young man and you uh, basically burned out your body. But I think um, if you play your cards right, you can go into your, I mean, I mean, Louis went into his 60s. So I think Louis did a 920 squat at 60 some years old. So, I mean, if, if uh, as long as everything holds up, you know, everybody's, everybody's body's different. You know, hips, they give away. I mean, it's wear and tear on the body. So you got to know when to uh, gas it and when not to and, and, and uh, take care of this thing that we call a, a corpse. Um, so there's a question. So with the West Side Method, people seem to end up with an obscene squat and bench, but just a good deadlift. Why do you think strong men are all deadlifting 900 to 1100, but not West Side Barbell Crew? Well, because, because strong men get to hitch and use wraps in theirs. That would be my answer. My answer to that was they use straps. So um, what can they do without, if they have to hold on to the weight? I've seen two men in this world do. Straps and hit, they, hitchings allowed. Hitchings allowed. Yeah, I don't understand it. Um, yeah. That's a couple of reasons why they, um, but they're, they're effing strong. I'm not taking nothing away from them. Um, oh, that's they, just, that's why West that, Side has, I mean. Yeah. If you're comparing West Side, because West Side has to go to standards of no hitch and no straps. And strong man. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's two different worlds, really. But. Yes. Um, just like maybe two more questions. Yeah, right? two more, and we got to shut it down, guys. We got we got to roll. You recommend the easy? Do you recommend the easy curl bar for the tricep extensions or just the straight bar? Both, both. Easy curl doesn't really uh, affect the the area. I mean, you, you're getting a little bit of a manager with your arms supinated somewhat, but do both. Two weeks with an easy curl bar, two weeks with a straight bar. Two weeks with easy curl and band, two, two weeks with a uh, straight bar and chain. I mean, you, I mean, uh, I, I definitely they're always in the mix, so. Okay, we're going to end this with this question. It's a good question. Yeah. Okay. I know the answer. Do you think Julius Maddox will bench 800 rocks? Absolutely. I was, um, you know, I, I'm doubtful when, I, when I, I see people make progress. I'm like, okay, you know, he's, he's, people make legitimate jumps, and then they, you know, they, they hit walls. And I was like, okay, you know, he's got to hear. But when I went out to the Arnold and the man hit 770 right in front of me, I, I, I no doubt in my mind he'll do it. And I believe he's going to be compensated quite well. And okay. it'll be, I would like to be there, uh, to be honest with you, because I think it's a, something you may not see again for a long while until, until another impressive individual like Julius comes along. And there might be. I mean, never say never. I mean, there could be somebody out there right now in your local gym that's a 300, 400 pound man, and he's tossing around 600 like an empty bar, and he's nobody's know who who the guy is, and then pretty soon he steps out there and uh, learns a few tricks of the trade. And um, but absolutely, 800 in June, I believe he's going for it. Stays healthy and injury free, no question. I'd like to see him go further because the man is. Uh, uh, I I I think he can do a lot more. Um, Definitely. I, but I heard he was going to do go for the log press world record or something. That was a rumor. Oh. After he does the 800, he's going to go try for the overhead press, log press, world record thing. So whatever he does, I mean, is an impressive I'm individual. Success, I'm sure. Whatever yeah. He does. Um, and then just like a few comments that people are just talking about, um, the road to the Arnold and um, how it inspired them. There's a just a couple of Yeah, road to the Arnold. I mean, it still fires me up. It gives me chills when I watch it. And you would, I know. I always want to watch it. I don't it. like to watch I it because it have, gets me amped, I especially at the end time. when it ends and it's and it's doing its thing. It's like, I got to go lift. That thing it gives me chills just talking about it. You know, there's a lot of memories and a lot of fun. And maybe one day we shoot another video and uh, 
and make it fun again. And I'm going to make it, a movie leading up to this Arnold, Road to the Arnold Finch Monster, the could, untold story. Could be. Never say <laughs> never, because that was a lot of fun. I really didn't think it would... Uh, that it would uh, would have got it right here. Shit, you know. I mean, yeah, it so cool. it's it's always close. Yeah, a lot of fun and cool people. And you still have copies of it, don't you? I don't. I don't have any. Well, I got a box of them somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, I don't have any in my book. People keep asking for my book. I can oh, only imagine. Yeah, I haven't seen your. Book. They reprinted that back in the day, and I had five hundred copies, and they're gone. And what I need to do is get off my ass and write another book. But who who wants to read? I think people like DVDs, like to watch. True, yeah. Yeah. So Just definitely, somebody needs to follow me around with a camera again and all my shenanigans and all the things that uh, go on in my life in my crazy wor world. Make a whole nother. Yeah, one. it'd be fun. But uh, hey, you know, we'll uh, uh, just remember you guys can. Uh, what do we got here? You can send email questions that. Uh, Maybe we'll cover on the show. We usually we tend to do this every Thursday. So, and like I said, we're we're gonna have guests pretty soon. I know. We're trying I, to figure out the Skype. We're doing some Skype stuff. things with this OBS software, and and uh, I've got it running. And not to say that we have our first guest, and then we can't hear him or something. It'd be a an embarrassing nightmare. But hey, you know, we're we're trying to practice uh, off camera and and make sure everything's working. But we appreciate you guys joining us and yeah, listen to us ramble much. and hope. Uh, Great questions. Yeah, awesome. sorry about the Myrtle Hornet. I I'm I'm just. I think the guy's getting a bad rap, so. <laughs> Let it go, I man. I can't. I'm impressed. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy-looking creature, yeah, and he's big, fine. and he's just getting a bad rap, man. And he's, he's a badass. Bad time, man. Yeah, he's a badass. You know, in. you know, he's bad whatever it is. So. To the picture right now. Yeah, well, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we'll get back to you on these questions next time, and um, it's time to go eat and uh, food. yeah, food. You know. Bench Monster's got to eat every few hours, you know. I'm not eating 15,000 calories by any means, but uh, I eat four or five meals a day at least. And uh, and uh, with this meat shortage, this red meat and chicken shortage now that we're so we're experiencing, you, you got to you go to Costco to get your red meat, and they don't have anything. It's it's crazy. And I was lucky enough today to get ribeyes. So. And some tri-tip. So I don't know what we're doing. But it's going to be meat and potatoes, definitely. So got a, got a big bench coming up Tuesday. Going to have this shirt on. Or if uh, the bench daddy shows up, you know, you, you know so... I'm hoping so. You know, this shirt right here is supposed to show up, triple ply. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it done. And uh, we're going to try to get a grand on there. So start tossing around some real weight. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much. And, thank you. Uh, and we'll Have do it again. Have a wonderful night. Yes, we will see you next Thursday. God bless, everybody.